Now, I'm not going to go through the visitor and residence principle in detail because there's plenty of information about that elsewhere, um, but just quickly to say that these are not types of people and this is a continuum. These are not two boxes. So if I come to the web with a kind of visitor mindset, then I probably already decided what I want to do. I go online, I find what I need, I do what I need to do, and then I log off, okay? So I really see the web as a series of tools or a pool of information, and I don't leave any trace behind, certainly no social trace. Whereas if I come to the web in a resident mode, then I'm going to uh, be living out a portion of my life online, okay? I'm going to see the web as a series of spaces, spaces or places where other people are. So I'm going to go online to express my opinion, uh, to uh, work through elements of my identity or my persona online. So as you can imagine, social media is where a lot of that takes place. So if I was wall posting to Facebook, if I was commenting on a blog post or if I was blogging myself, that would be more resident. It's much more visible and when I log off, I'm liable to leave some kind of a trace. So that's the continuum. Now what we can do with the continuum is we can add a vertical axis, okay? And in this case, I'm going to write personal and institutional. So that gives us a grid here that we can work with and we can plot how we engage with the web across these different quadrants. So um, for me, this is, this is a simplified version of, of, of my engagement, my personal engagement map. So we can start over here. If I put a block down here, then this is email for me, for example. So the reason that that's down there is because it's not a particularly visible activity um, I, I'm usually emailing a small number of people. I know who they are. I'm not really performing in the same way that I would be if I was posting to a wall in Facebook or if I was tweeting, for example. And it's very institutional. This is my institutional email I'm referring to. Now, when we've done the mapping process before, um, some people have actually got two blocks for email. They've got their institutional email and they've got their personal email that they probably put up in this quadrant somewhere over here. And it's, it's interesting to think about the fact that what you've got there is exactly the same technology, but split by role. So they've compartmentalized their institutional email and their personal email, which uh, many of us do. Now, having said that this is very uh, visitory email in, in, in my mode of using it, in actual fact, for, for many of the people that I work with here in the department, it's the place where I'm most resident. So perhaps you could argue that it should go this way a little bit but it's never going to be particularly visible. And you know there are other technologies where I'm probably um, institutional and a bit more resident, like Skype, for example, when I'm collaborating with people who are outside of the department. So let's go to the other end of the spectrum then. Uh, and the, the technology or the platform or the place, if you like, that I'm most resident in, that uh, you will, you know, if you, if you want to find me online, then this is the place to come looking for me, is Twitter. And that maps to around about here. Now, the, the actual size and the shape of these blocks and exactly where you put them aren't too important. Uh, in this case, my, my uh, Twitter profile, if you like, it started off being quite pr uh, personal when uh, I got the account, which was quite a few years ago now. And then as more people have followed me, so uh, members of staff in the department here, or people that I collaborate with around the UK and around the world, it's become increasingly more institutional and more professional in some ways. So it's a bit of a mix, um, but it's, it's gradually expanded down to be more institutional. But that is, is, is where I reside online the most. Now, another thing where I am really quite present, if you like, online as a, as a person, is in the blog, which is an institutional blog. So it's a group blog, uh, which is part of Technology Assisted Lifelong Learning. Different people contribute to it. So it's, it's not my own blog, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's institutional in that sense. And I only ever actually blog about things that are to do with education and technology. Uh, occasionally it gets slightly philosophical. Those are the longer posts and probably not the best posts, if I'm honest. Um, but it's very much about me, about my opinion, 
I'm putting the posts out there so people will comment, so that there'll be some form of discussion. So that's why I plot it down here as being really quite highly resident. Even though perhaps blogs aren't the most social of social media, I still think that they can be very resident depending on how you go about things. So let's get the blue pen back again. Uh, talking of social media, actually, one of the intriguing things from the point of view of my map and from this mapping process overall is that my Facebook account would be up over here. And the reason for that is because I'm only really friends with my friends, um, interesting semantics there, and with my uh, family, but I don't really use Facebook actively. I just use it like a kind of fancy address book. And when we've run this mapping process before, we found people plot Facebook all over this quadrant in different places depending on how they use it. Because the technology itself, especially if it's something quite intricate like Facebook, doesn't mandate the mode of engagement. So in my case, I'm using it in a very visitor fashion. Some people will use it like an address book, but then also privately. So they'll IM, they'll instant message just one or two other people or message uh, a little bit like Facebook email each other. So they're not visible, even though they're being social in social media, which would put their Facebook somewhere around here. Whereas other people are posting pictures of themselves, pictures of their friends, posting all over the wall all the time. So they're highly resident in Facebook. Now my point is you can't just ask students what technologies they use because that won't necessarily be indicative of their mode of engagement, which is the more important factor if you're looking for ways to engage with them uh, in your practice or with the services that you provide. So, uh, what else have I got? I think that the last thing that I'm going to plot on here that is of interest goes right in the middle. And that, in my case, is Google Docs. So I only have one Google account. I don't have two Google accounts, and, um, or three or four, as some people seem to be able to manage. And what that means is that if you go to my Google Docs, some of those files, some of those documents are personal, and some of them are institutional. And so for me, Google Docs has converged in the center of this uh, map. Uh, for a lot of other people that have done the mapping process, it's Facebook that's converged. And I think that's quite interesting because what's happening is the technology is causing this, this context collapse, if you like. And what originally or traditionally would have been two separate compartments, the institutional and the personal, they'd have been uh, perhaps more neatly separated. Through the use of, because of the ubiquity of the web and certain services, they are beginning to collapse together and uh, end up in the middle of the map. So as I say, for a lot of people, it's Facebook where they've got a profile that they started socially and then perhaps students start to friend them, other staff members start to friend them or they start to friend them. And then you get to the point whereby when you log onto Facebook, you don't know whether you're gonna be dealing with something that's to do with work or something that's personal or sometimes it's quite difficult to identify the line between those two things. It becomes very blurry. So we call that decompartmentalization. Now, the last thing that I'm going to put on the map actually, which is something that's very easy to forget, I almost forgot it myself, but it's huge, it's so huge, we almost overlook it, is a massive block here for me and for most people, which is searching. Now, it, 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 as I say, it's so common, sometimes we, we almost uh, pass it by. You could say that was Googling. For a lot of students, depending on, on uh, where they are in their educational career, this is going to Google, putting in a search term, and then taking a look at Wikipedia or one of the top three links, certainly something off the first page of search results. And I think this is typical, really. You know, this goes all the way across my personal and my institutional. I use it in both contexts. Uh, now, what we find out of the uh, JISC research is that a lot of students are a little bit nervous about perhaps talking about this activity, and they're certainly nervous about citing some of the non-traditional sources that they find as a result of this activity, especially Wikipedia. And that's because the institution that they're at, either directly or implicitly, has, has sort of um, said that it's not legitimate, it's not quite legitimate activity, it's not quite a legitimate sort of strategy for learning. And so what happens is because this is so convenient and so efficient, which is why everybody does it, they carry on doing it, but they don't talk about it. And this creates what I 
slightly emotively call uh, learning, the learning black market, um, whereby we have a massive amount of activity in this space, but it's not properly represented within an institutional context because students would rather keep quiet about it. And I think it's something that it would be useful to kind of open up, whether that's through conversation or uh, facilitating students in their sort of literacies in this area. I think this is a really important area. So there's a couple of interesting things that have come out of there in terms of decompartmentalization, in terms of the learning black market, and, it, and the, the, the sense that perhaps you can use the same technologies with different modes of engagement, and that's why this process is important.